welcome to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name's Angela, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Rainbow Ange, and you can also find an Instagram account and a Facebook page for my yarn shop, uh, Yarn and Yarns. Here on the channel, you'll find me chatting about knitting, crochet, spinning, sometimes a little bit of sewing, and also my adventures of being a yarn store owner. Uh, as I've already mentioned, my yarn shop is actually the same name as this channel, Yarn and Yarns, and we're based in Penarth, which is in South Wales, just outside of Cardiff, here in the UK. Thank you for joining me today. So, um, as always, a very big welcome back to anyone who has been here before, and a very big hello to anyone who is joining me for the first time. We are creeping ever closer to the 100 subscriber mark, so thank you to people who have been subscribing recently and also to anyone who has been spreading the word um, about my little channel. I'm hoping when we get to 100 do a giveaway, well not, not I'm hoping, I will when we get to 100 uh, do a giveaway so if you fancy helping me get there then please do subscribe if you haven't already um, and perhaps also let your um, fabulous fibery friends um, know that I'm here and yeah we'll see if we can get to that 100 mark in the next few weeks. I also want to say a big thank you to um, everyone who left comments um, on my last episode. Well, I'm always thankful for anyone who leaves comments on any of my episodes. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I recorded last and my last episode was a little bit different. Um, I have done a few episodes like it in the past but it wasn't the usual finished objects, works in progress kind of format. Um, I was recording just little snippets of my day and uh, a lot of you left comments to say that you really enjoy that format um, for which I am very thankful. Um, I think that I will make that a regular um, type of video, not every week, um, but I'm thinking maybe once a month. And I find that a really useful format to be able to record and chat to you. Um, it's quite often tricky for me to carve out a big chunk of time um, where I can gather all my objects and sit and chat to you. Um, so being able to just record uh, a few minutes here and there and then edit those together to form an entirety um, is a really good way for me to try and keep coming to you on a regular basis. So yeah, there'll be more of those in the future. Today's video will also be a slightly different from the usual format. I have got um, a couple of historic finished objects to show you. One spinish, uh, spinish? <laughs> One spinning finished object to show you and also a couple of works in progress. Um, but there is a theme today and I am going to be talking about Wensleydale yarn and my absolute love affair with this beautiful stuff. Um, and the reason I've decided to do this, I was invited to talk to the local branch of the Weavers and Spinners Guild and I did that last week. And the main focus of my talk was um, really about the challenges, surprises, uh, adventures that had happened during my first year um, of running the shop. Um, and when I sat down and thought about my journey um, to becoming a yarn shop owner, I realised um, that there was one particular yarn that really started off my obsession big time, um, and that was Wensleydale. So about mm, probably five years ago, um, we took a trip to the Yorkshire Dales, um, which is up north in England. And um, we, it was myself and James and James's parents. Um, we hired a lovely little cottage, which we stayed for the week. And then we were traveling around visiting different places and uh, just generally enjoying the gorgeous English um, country landscape. Um, beautiful um, fields, rolling hills, um, dry stone walls, sheep everywhere, um, just that kind of idyllic quintessential um, English countryside that you can imagine. And we took a trip to a town called Hawes and I had really just started getting back into knitting and crochet big time 
and I had not long moved house and I had downsized to quite a tiny little flat um, at the time I'd been doing a lot of quilting and sewing um, but I didn't have anywhere any space that I was able to keep my sewing machine um, set up permanently so I went back to um, knitting and crochet for their portability um, so we were traveling around the dales and we went to the Wensleydale creamery um, which is a dairy where they make Wensleydale cheese um, which you may be familiar with if you are a Wallace and Gromit fan <laughs> and we'd been to this gorgeous um, creamery and we were walking back down through the little town back to where we parked up and I stumbled across a little yarn shop um, now I can't remember the name of the shop now and um, I do know that it still exists I probably should have lo looked that up before I started recording um, but I know I was having a chat with a customer um, not long after I took over the yarn shop um, and we were talking about being a um, like a fibre tourist really so picking up souvenir yarns from our trips and she mentioned that she'd been to the Dales and uh, she was telling me about this fantastic shop that she'd found and of course I knew exactly where she meant um, but anyway I popped into the shop as we were passing and I think I must have been super feeling super inspired um, by the landscape and I asked um, if she had anything local up until this point I'd really mostly knit and crocheted with commercial yarns um, so the lovely lady in the shop um, pointed me towards um, some skeins of Wensleydale and I had no idea that there was such a thing as a Wensleydale sheep. Um, we were obviously in the Wensleydale area um, so it was just perfect. Um, so I bought a couple of skeins of yarn and a pattern that had been just uh, put together, designed by a local designer I believe, um, just for a quite a simple lacy scarf um, and this is the project. Uh, so yeah beautiful natural coloured yarn and yeah it's just a really <laughs> really long scarf I'm pretty sure I continued until I'd used up um two 100 gram skeins of yarn uh, might even have been three probably two um so yeah just knit 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 away until that was finished and yeah it really really sparked off an interest for me in locally produced stuff and exploring you know breed specific yarns and British yarns and yeah uh, one thing led to another and four years down the line I ended up running a yarn shop <laughs> and I can say um, with some certainty that it all started here um, this happened when I looked back um, at my project notes this also happens to be um, West Yorkshire spinners yarn um, so this must have been my first encounter with West Yorkshire spinners too uh, they're a brand that I absolutely love now and I think they have grown quite a lot um, in the last few years um, I remember you know only one or two years ago having not really heard of them but now they're they're everywhere um, which is fantastic because they make lovely stuff and actually my two works in progress are knit in the same Wensleydale yarns um, so we'll be chatting more about those later um, I've got one more historic uh, finished object to show you. Um, so after I fell in love with that Wensleydale, I was just on the hunt for more Wensleydale and I think I picked this up at Unravel um, when I went to Unravel. Now, um, again, I, probably, I should have looked before um, I started recording, but um, I picked up some skeins of pure Wensleydale yarn from a company that no longer exists. Um, I can't remember their name offhand, but I know they, they, they don't trade anymore. Um, I believe the, well, they may trade, but if they do, it's on the other side of the world because I believe the owners moved um, from the UK to New Zealand. And um, I picked up from that Unravel a couple of skeins of another natural uh, Wensleydale colour. And I knit the Selkie Shawl by uh, Melody Hoffman, who is B Mandarines um, on Ravelry, I believe. Um, but you'll definitely find her if you search for Melody Hoffman. Um, and I paired the Wensleydale with, um, it's a four ply yarn, um, I paired it with some Jamesons and Smith uh, two ply jumper weight um, in this lovely yellow. So the lace is in the yellow, could do with a bit of a block to um, straighten that edge out. 
Um, but yeah, that was my second uh, foray into Wensleydale. Um, this yarn stayed in my stash for a little while because it was pretty precious. Um, I wanted um, to have that Wensleydale uh, just there to knit if um, I wanted to. Um, the reason that it ended up popping onto the needles uh, is because I stashed some more Wensleydale. But I'll chat to you about that a little bit later. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, really kind of where my love of Len Wensleydale started and developed. So on to my um, recent finished object. So this is my Wensleydale yarn that I have finished spinning on the drop spindle. I think maybe in the last episode um, I had a chat about spinning. Um, yeah, I think I had a spinning section at the end and I think I explained that I had all four spin drop spindles and they were all full um, of different projects so my aim was to get a couple of those finished well I managed to finish one and this was my Wensleydale yarn um, this fibre came from Ustrid uh, which is a small Welsh producer and I picked this up at Wonderwall uh, last year not this year and I have finished applied washed this yarn now I am still pretty much a newbie spinner and this is probably not the best yarn that I've spun it's a bit crinkly and crimpy and I nothing to do with the fibre at all because it's absolutely gorgeous I think it's probably just my lack of skill um, as a spinner um, but I've got two hanks of this um, around about double knit two ply um, yarn um, as you can see it's quite thick and thin and it's quite wavy um, but I've got about 80 meters um, of this and it, oh, it's so soft I just love it I love it even though it's pretty imperfect in terms of spinning I'm sure all the spinners out there are staring at this horrified at the state <laughs> of this imperfect yarn but I love it so I'm gonna probably knit with this fairly quickly um, so that yeah I still enjoy it because you know as I say the more you practice spinning hopefully the better your yarn becomes um, and the less likely you are to revisit your older stash um, so yeah again beautiful natural colorway a mm, little bit darker than uh, the one used in my selkie shawl but yeah I'm pleased to have that finished um, I am contemplating maybe knitting up um, some sort of softy from this. I don't think there's enough um, for a project. Um, I've already got some fingerless mitts from some hand spun um, and I don't think there's going to be quite enough for a hat. Um, so I, I suppose I could pair it with something else for a hat but yeah I'm thinking maybe some sort of cute softy, um, maybe even a sheep. <laughs> I think that would be quite fun um, but yeah watch this space on that one okay um, so on to works in progress I have got two works in progress um, from Wensleydale at the moment and it's the West Yorkshire Spinners fleece which is a double knit yarn and this is the Wensleydale gems uh, the first project I'm keeping in this fun seabirds project bag which I made last year um, the oyster catcher was the thing that got my attention on this fabric uh, oyster catchers are my favorite birds which you might have heard me talk about before and you can see this beautiful felted oyster catcher tucked away in my little alcove um, and I believe that was made by cat's eye collective um, you can check her out on Instagram she's a very talented maker um, and she does all sorts of crafts so um, in here is my Esme wrap um, or shawl I should say um, so this is a West Yorkshire spinners pattern um, designed by Sarah Hatton to go with the gems yarn um, it's called a shawl but it's quite a shallow shawl it's it's fairly sort of scarf shaped really it's quite um, shallow quite long um, I've made one of these already um, in the colors as shown so gray and pink um, I actually have four of these to make. Um, I've been commissioned um, to make four uh, for one of my customers to give as Christmas gifts. Um, originally she asked for two pink and then two other colours, um, but we had some extra colours come in stock um, the other week, so she's now decided 
just to go with four completely different colours, which is brilliant for me um, because I get to knit with all of the yarn. <laughs> Um, so this is how far I have got with this project, so not a huge way into it. Um, it's a bit bunched up on my needle here, um, but it's quite a good um, one if you don't like um, knitting like the big triangle of crescent shape shawls where you can end up with hundreds of stitches on the needles. Um, this one you cast on, um, I think it's around about 100-ish stitches, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, um, but you never go um, any longer than that so um, yeah you're kind of always decreasing in actual fact um, I made one modification last time I knit this pattern and that was to not knit it quite so long and um, so you do these lovely eyelet sections in the different colours uh, for this one I am using Moonstone which is the grey and Peridot which is the green um, Peridot is actually my birthstone I think I'm an August baby I'm pretty sure um, that Peridot is that um, the best time for that month so yeah I'm a little way into this um, but after you you do these decreases so there's kind of five repeats four repeats three repeats two repeats and then you do a little section where there are alternating sort of one row eyelet repeats and then you go completely into the grey um, so last time I knit this I just didn't knit it quite as long as the pattern um, suggest and I think I'll do that for all of them because it ends up really quite long and skinny at one end um, and I wasn't quite as keen on that look um, so yeah beautiful beautiful soft yarn in fact before I go on to um, show you my second work in progress which is um, obviously uh, it, well obviously I say you don't know what it is yet <laughs> obvious to me because I know what's coming um, it's knit from the same gems yarn um, but it's a garment rather than an accessory um, so before I go on to that um, I did a little bit of research on Wensleydale and I've got uh, a few notes here so I thought I'd tell you a little bit more about the breed um, this is just from a quick Google search so hopefully this information is accurate it comes from a couple of different sources um, but officially the Wensleydale breed was named in 1876 and it's a cross between a British Leicester and a Teeswater sheep um, it's classified as a luster long wool I believe it remains on the rare breeds list here in the UK um, I think the number of breeding ewes is increasing the yarn seems to be pretty popular at the moment which can only be fantastic for the breed um, so yeah it seems to be going from strength to strength at the moment and I, I yeah I totally see why you know I have had a love affair with this yarn for the past five or six years um, so yeah I'm glad that it is becoming ever more popular um, so as I said it was a it was it is uh, a long wool and long walls are naturally strong hard wearing and lustrous um, with the Wensleydale however the fibre is finer in diameter which gives it an even longer staple length than a lot of long walls and also makes it even more soft and lustrous than most long walls um, and the sheep they produce no kemp which means that a lot of the fleece is usable and um, so from the average adult sheep you get about five kilos of yarn so yeah I hope you find that somewhat interesting I did when I was looking that up okay so second work in progress uh, again I'm keeping this in another one of my project bags this is one I made recently um, I made a few bags for the shop recently um, this one I made a bit of a pig's ear of um, sewing up the side seam and I managed to catch the fabric I don't know if you can see that you can see that up there um, so I wasn't 100% happy and I couldn't be bothered to like rip it all out um, so I decided to keep that for myself I love this fabric uh, this beautiful colour combination so um, it wasn't a chore to keep that <laughs> <laughs> right so my second project is my Harriet cardigan and um, when I ordered in the West Yorkshire Spinners Wensleydale Gems yarn um, this was one of the patterns that caught my eye and um, for obvious reasons orange orange <laughs> um, so yeah I have been wanting to colour this on for a while um, and then my lovely friend Erin who is Dufferin24 on Instagram 
uh, she ordered yarn to make her very own Harriet so we decided to cast on and have a mini knit along and that is exactly what we are doing. Um, so far I have managed to knit two sleeves and I am now partially up the back. I have started decreasing for the armholes, it's quite a cropped cardigan. Um, I debated adding some extra length but I quite like the style and I wear a lot of um, longer t-shirts and things like that so I, I quite like to have my um, outer layer um, shorter than those. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I like to be able to see the visible layers. You know what I mean. <laughs> so yeah, I kept it um, to the length dimensions as stated in the pattern. It's a combination of these two beautiful colours. Uh, so the deep grey is called granite and the orange is called fire opal. Um, it's a really simple colour work design. I shall show you my floats on the back because that seems to be something that knitters like. Um, it's knit backwards and forwards in pieces. Um, so I will have some seaming to do at the end. Uh, but I do not mind that at all. Um, one, th oh, this is just, oh, it's so soft. I literally, it, it could cuddle up next to this. Um, and we're getting later on in the day, so it wouldn't surprise me if uh, James comes up here later and finds me asleep on a pile of Wensleydale. <laughs> right, I'm trying to find, here we go. Um, so I am notoriously bad at gauge swatching. I know we should do it to make sure that our garments fit and it's definite I tell my, all of my customers to do some sort of tension square or gauge swatch so it's definitely a case of do as I say not as I do um, but as this was knitting pieces I decided to start with the sleeves first so that I could use them somewhat as a gauge swatch um, so I started with this sleeve and knit a few rows soaked it let it dry flat so that I could make sure that I was happy with the fabric and to check what tension I'm getting and to make sure that the garment's going to fit and hopefully it will <laughs> although you never know um so I just wanted to show you I don't hopefully you'll be able to see this on camera um the difference that soaking and blocking makes so um if you are if you are attempting colour work for the first time and you're a little bit disappointed about the unevenness of your stitches um some of that will block out so I've got this marker here um, so I knit from here up to the marker as my gauge swatch and then soaked it. So I think you can probably just about see on the camera the difference between, particularly in the orange squares from here up, um, they're a lot more uneven than the ones below the marker there. Can you see that? I think you can just about make that out. Um, so yeah, some of your unevenness will definitely block out. Obviously you need to make sure that your floats aren't too tight and pulling your fabric in. Um, but yeah, if you're worried about the look of your colour work, um, then try taking your project off needles and putting it on some waist yarn and soaking it and drying it um, as you will be doing um, with your finished project going forward. See if that makes a difference before you totally despair. Um, so obviously this project still got a fair way to go I've got to finish the back and I've got the two fronts um, to, to knit I am knitting these on uh, some needles that are slightly different to my normal so these are Knit Pro Royales um, so they're wooden needles with some metal tips and a few of my customers I don't stock these as standard in the shop but a couple of my customers has requested them um, so I thought I would also order myself a pair for this project uh, these are on interchangeables um, oh look orange cable <laughs> orange yarn, orange wool, orange cable. I didn't do that on purpose, honestly. This is the, <laughs> the Knit Pro um, colour cables. So they're different colours for different lengths. And this one just so happens to be orange. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying these needles so far. Um, time will tell. They're not the sharpest, but they are um, 
suiting this project really well so I'll definitely try them on a few more projects um, before I give a final verdict but yeah I'm enjoying them enjoying them very much so far so yeah that's my two works in progress um, made out of Wensleydale so before I wrap up I thought I'd also show you some Wensleydale that I have in my stash I don't often do uh, acquisition segments um, I don't buy huge amounts of yarn these days because I have a shop full of it and yeah James despairs about the amount of yarn in this house already so <laughs> I need to curb my enthusiasm for yarn somewhat so I have two yarns in my stash which um, feature one Wensleydale um, the first I've had in my stash for quite some time um, this is from Felt Studio UK um, I believe this is 100% Wensleydale it doesn't specifically say um, it says on the back that this is the Yorkshire colourway and it's hand spun hand dyed Wensleydale wool so I'm assuming it's 100% Wensleydale I've got two skeins of this and look how gorgeous this is i believe i bought this on a d stash uh, on ebay um, but there's lots of gorgeous colors in there greens and heathery purples and some mustardy yellow tones um yeah and i have been hoarding this uh, for a little while i just haven't quite found the right project i've got 350 odd yards i think 400 yards nearly um um, so this is like sitting in my stash. I am like a dragon hoarding her gold, except I'm hoarding this Wensleydale. <laughs> but if you have any ideas, um, this is about a DK weight yarn. Um, if you have any ideas for projects that you think might fit this yarn, then let me know. Always interested in uh, project inspiration. And the other yarn, which has uh, some Wensleydale content that I have in my stash, is actually a relatively new purchase. So Blacker Yarns, um, who produce lots of lovely British wool and breed specific yarns, um, recently had a sale of their Tamar, which is um, one of their luster blends. Uh, it's a four ply yarn. Um, it's 100% wool. Um, it's a mix of several different breeds bleeds breeds including Teeswater, Cotswold, um, Leicester Longwall and of course Wensleydale and I ordered two skeins of the Balancy colourway which is a natural kind of taupey colourway um, when I ordered this the photograph looked like it had more purpley sort of hue um, but it's very much uh, a naturally sort of brown tone. It's looking more silver on the camera than it actually is in real life. It's definitely kind of taupey. But I really like this. Um, there's 350 uh, meters per skein. Um, so I've got 700 meters. So I haven't decided entirely what I'm going to do with this, which has broken my cardinal rules because I'm just supposed to, self imposed, be only buying yarn that I have projects in mind for. Um, but I just had to to get this because uh, Wednesday Dale blend and it's gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Um, so yeah, again, if you have any ideas, um, I'm thinking probably some sort of shawl, but um, I'm not averse to thinking about adding this together with some other yarns to maybe make some sort of colour work project. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts, but um, absolutely gorgeous. All of this. Me. Hoarding my Wensleydale. <laughs> right, okay, that is it for the Wensleydale chatter. Um, I hope you have enjoyed um, listening to me waffle on and show off some projects. Um, of course, let me know in the comments if you have. Before I sign off entirely, I have one little shop announcement that I would like to make. Um, a lot of people have asked whether they can purchase yarns from my business yarn and yarns um, we don't have a website at the moment and at the moment I still don't have a website um, yeah it's one of those things I know I know I need to do but it's just finding um, a decent chunk of time where I can concentrate and do it um, but for the time being I have started up an eBay page so we are yarn and yarns underscore six on eBay I'll put a link in the box below and also there is a link via my um, Instagram profiles, both Yarn and Yarns and Rainbow Ange, uh, where you can find us. Um, I shall be adding new yarns onto that page every week. 
um, I'm hoping it will be a way for us to get a bit of extra income through the summer which is traditionally a bit more quiet um, for us in the shop. Um, I have planned in the main to list a bunch of yarns that are discontinued that we have discontinued so maybe they are still produced but I just no longer will be stocking in the shop and also some excess stock um, so those of you who have been following along my journey might remember that I basically purchased yarn and yarns um, as a established business and I took on stock as was um, so when I first took on the shop I brought a lot of stuff out of the shop just to really streamline things and tidy things up um, and my aim was to try and eBay some of that last year but that didn't happen so yep yeah, that's now happening this year um, to start with last week I listed a bunch of really kind of standard lovely um, acrylic yarns mostly double knits and this week I've added some cotton yarns and some serdi yarns and also a few mixed lots um, so things really where I've ended up with you know one or two balls left in a dye lot um, so yeah if you fancy checking those out they'll all be commercial yarns um, for the time being um, and not my standard inventory obviously eventually I will try and get to the point where I do have some sort of online outlet to enable me to sell um, a bit more broadly but as always in the meantime I'm happy to do mail order for our standard stock just ping me a message get in contact via um, Facebook or Instagram or comments below um, but if you do fancy grabbing yourself a yarn bargain, then please do have a hop on over to our eBay page and keep an eye on my Instagram accounts because I will no doubt be posting on there every week with a quick summary um, of what in terms of new stuff has gone on to eBay. Uh, so yeah, that really is it. I am going to sign off now. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope I haven't bored you with my waffle about Wensleydale. <laughs> Until next time, a great big woolly hugs to you all. Bye for now.